Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, their brothers and sisters in Christ. I stand up here with a little intrepidation in asking you to think about if you have the perfect body. Now, of course, I can't claim anything close, but what do you think the ideal is? Are you content with the way your body looks? Well, even some of those that we might consider having a better body than us aren't content. There are those that are models that think that they have to do this or that or just this is out or this is just not the way they want it. How is your body? Well, maybe it's not just the outward appearance. Maybe it's your hearing. Maybe it's your sight that you wish was just a little bit better. Oh, if I had it just this way, I could do so much more. Or maybe it's a, an ailment that affects us and how we move, or something that affects how our health is taking on. We can always find something that we wish would be just a little bit better than it is. No one can claim to have the perfect body. But more important than what just our physical bodies do for us, that, that reminds us that we are not perfect, we're about your spiritual body. How is your spiritual relationship with God? Are you fully in tune with God, what God has said to you, or are there times that you wish that you could fight that temptation that you give in to all the time? What about the tendency to listen to or, or hear Scripture? Is that, is that in tune with the way that your body should be? There are lots of things that go into what we should or shouldn't be, and lots of ways that God sees that we are not perfect, even though we can put out a, a pretty good persona to others. We have to look at ourselves. We have to see where we stand and what we've done, and then we have to answer the question, where will we find holiness? You see, holiness is that perfect standard that God has set in which we are to compare ourselves, much like we often try to compare ourselves with someone else's picture or what they look like. Listen to the verse right before, one of the verses right before our text and stand for sure on what it is that God sets as the standard. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Jesus put it this way, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Wow. That's quite a standard, isn't it? Just one time saying, I don't need God in this situation has already disqualified us. Saying one time, I know better than what God has said disqualifies us. Taking out on someone our frustration for how they act disqualifies us. Taking God's word and saying, I'll get it when I get it disqualifies us. How we think about other people and what they are to us that we wish we had something better or something that they had disqualifies us. Not taking our word, the word of God to our children and failing to give the example that we should set disqualifies us. So it's there. It's right at that point when we are right in the middle of thinking, where do I stand with God? What is holiness? That the writer to the Hebrews brings out this section of God's Word, which as we've been looking at the past month or so in Hebrews, this comes after the Heroes of Faith chapter. This comes at a point where we've seen example after example from those who had taken place in the Old Testament on how they lived by faith, and now the screws are put to us. Where do you stand? 
The writer to the Hebrews gives us two different, perso- two different ways to approach this topic. One is the picture of Mount Sinai. The picture of Mount Sinai is what God had given to His people as laws and decrees. In fact, it was a very scary situation in which thunder and lightning were going all around the mountain where Moses was supposed to go to demonstrate that this is not just a one-time God, a little petty God that that can, can do something for a limited amount of time or someone that we hope will do something, but it is the God who controls all things. The one who made the heavens and the earth can make them look as fierce as he, can, as he wants. In fact, he even demonstrated that holiness by saying that anyone that comes near to that mountain should be put to death. So listen to the first place that the writer to the Hebrews says that we could look for our salvation, our holiness. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it must be stopped must be stoned. So where do you stand with even starting at the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. God's not looking for an outward keeping of such a law as though we can put on a show for human beings, but God doesn't really see No, when he asks and says those things, he wants our utmost attention. Do money and possessions or sleeping in or or our own convenience stand in the way of what we do for God? Do we think that we can respect and listen to others as long as they are in agreement with us? Are we excused for what other people do to get our attention for themselves? Well, they made me do it. They told me this. They said they. You see, when we look at that law, there is no wiggle room. And that's where we must stand when we stand here with God's commands, with His law. And if we think we're doing okay compared to someone else, God's not looking at someone else when He looks at us. And He sees it all. In fact, when we even compare ourselves, let's compare ourselves to Moses. Let's not take the easy fruit. Let's look at Moses and where he stood. How do you compare to Moses? Moses had a comment on what this law was doing to him. That even as he was called to come to go to God in order to talk to God and get his commandments, he recognizes he was trembling with fear. How dare he go to God? You see, when we try to put the things of this life and this earth as our standard for living, We fall very much short of what God looks and demands. Both what we've done in the past and both in what we're looking for in the future. Do I want things to be planned out so that I know what's coming? So much so that I'm worried and and not content when things don't work out the way I want? Is that putting the first commandment where it belongs? Got an illustration for that. I've been watching my outdoor shows and I've been watching how you're supposed to shoot with a bow and arrow, so I'm going to do my best at taking aim at a target. Got it, right? Perfect. I hit exactly what I was... Well, you know that I wasn't aiming for that. Let's give it a target. Oh, wait. That's not where God's law is. There it is. Now it's a different story, isn't it? Now I've got a specific point in which I'm aiming for. The world likes to use that first illustration of a shot. I'm good. I'm better than others. I'm doing what I am trying to do. 
But that's not what God has directed us to look. He's not content that that someone else has influenced us to, to pick the low road. Or that our lives have been so challenging that it's no wonder that we've messed up. No, God says, I want you right here. I want you focused on me. So much so that the target is something that we often don't even pay attention to. But to the writer to the Hebrews, that message of the law points us to how much we need where God has actually given us His holiness. Listen to the next verses of our text. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. Do you see the value of what we've been given? Kind of like the hymn that we sung earlier, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. God presents us something that we have not earned for ourselves, but something that He gives to us. And look at the reaction and the blessings that come when we see that God has given us what we need. Mount Zion, a picture of what God has brought to us, not a picture of 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 what we owe to God. Heavenly Jerusalem, a place we get to live for eternity. City of the living God. We don't have a God that comes and goes, the new God of this age versus the old God of the old age. We have the God who created heaven and earth. Thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly We are in the midst of rejoicing when we have what Jesus has given to us. And our names are written in heaven. Not one of us could demand that from God. And so when we try to look at ourselves, we we miss out on the gift that we've been given. It's sitting right here in front of us. Mount Zion is all about what God has made us to be through Jesus Christ. That all of our transgressions, all the things that we failed when we've looked at the law have been put on Jesus so that our lives will now be spotless. We have a connection to God because He has given it to us. The writer continues, You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of the righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. When you face the last day, and you decide that you're trying to figure out what should my body, what should my presentation be to God, Mount Sinai gives us a bunch of you should have done's. But what we do when we come to God and say, no, He has done it, we have a comfort. We have an assurance that God is the one who brings us our life. Righteous men made perfect. And so how does that living according to Mount Zion look like? It means that though I go through this life, I am not trying to earn God's favor, but I have received it. How thankful are you? Where is that thanks shown? How can other people see your thankfulness? You see, Mount Zion is all about what God has done. Our holiness or that perfect faith life or that perfect body can never be attained by what we do or say or think. And when we set aside our need for doing something to earn God's favor, we see the wonderful gift that God has given to us. To reach the place of holiness has been won for us. And so now we live that 
and we let others see it in our lives. Amen. Please stand.